For this project, I'm gonna replumb my house from start to finish. Uh, this house was built in 1957. It's a small ranch house, about 1,500 square feet, and um, I'll be replumbing the whole house in PEX. Currently, it's got the original copper, uh, which is well over 60 years old now, and I've had a couple pinhole leaks. Uh, since we've moved in and I know that I'm just kind of buying time at this point. I have decided not to do a home run system. I just don't think that um, that would be the most efficient way to do this house. The attic's really small. I don't want to have to run tons of PEX pipe up there. So I'm running two main lines, a hot and a cold. Uh, they're both going to be three quarters inch and I'll be insulating it all the way through just so that the hot stays hot and the cold stays cold. I will do certain things along the way. I might do something different along the way so that I can teach you different ways to do things and think creatively about it. So I might use a sharp, sharp bite fitting for one thing. And then the next time I might use, um, a, you know, a PEX to see PVC fitting, just so you can see different ways of doing things. So, um, you'll probably see a lot of that throughout this process, just so that when you do your project, you'll be able to say, Hey, I think this is the best way to do it rather than, um, this other method. So, I'm gonna be using PEX A for this repipe. Uh, the specific brand Apollo is from Home Depot. Uh, there's a couple couple different brands out there. Um, this one's supposed to be really good. Um, this is three quarter inch, this is a hundred foot roll. Now the PEX A is easier to work with than um, PEX B. It's a little bit more uh, easier to bend. Um, you will notice on here, UV exposure, the following limits apply to UV sunlight. Exposure for Apollo's PEX tubing, Apollo PEX maximum exposure time of 15 days accumulated. So this stuff's really sensitive to UV light. You do not want to leave it outside or have it exposed to any type of UV light. Even if it's like uh, in a garage or something, you should have it covered with insulation. I'm going to be insulating the main trunk lines, the, uh, the main three quarter inch lines that are coming in and supplying the whole house. Um, I'm going to insulate the cold as well as the hot lines um, just because it's going to be up in the attic and we're in Florida so I don't want the uh, cold water not being cold when it comes on it comes out and uh, and I don't want the warm water not being or the hot water not being hot when it comes out so we're just going to go ahead and insulate both lines I bought this 75 foot roll um, it's for a three quarter inch you can get this on Amazon I'll put a link in the description um, this stuff has a R rating of 3.3, I think it was. So, which was a little bit higher than even the foam stuff that Home Depot sold, so. And I like the fact that this comes in a, a roll rather than six foot section, so I don't have to seam everything together. I should just be able to slide this on my full length sections. I purchased these clamps on Amazon. I'll throw a link in the description to these. Uh, these are 40 millimeter pipe clamps. And so my idea is to Put the pecs in the insulation and then use these pipe clamps and it's a tight fit you kind of have to squeeze the foam around it you can buy 50 millimeter clamps but it's a little too loose so i would recommend going with the 40 millimeter if you're doing uh, 3 fourths inch pecs that's what it looks like it holds it nice and tight and it's nice because it's just one screw. So I'll be screwing into these. I'll be screwing these into the joists in the attic, and it's just one quick screw. And then you push the um, the whole assembly down into it, rather than you know trying to clamp this pipe down and then insulating around the clamps and stuff like that. This just makes it a lot easier. I have a hundred foot roll of PEX here, three quarter inch, and I need to straighten it out. Uh, it comes wound up in this tight roll like this. I need to straighten it out and get uh, two 40 foot sections for the hot and cold trunk lines that are gonna be the main lines that run through my attic. Um, so what I'm doing here is I have this Schedule 40 uh, one inch PVC pipe and um, it's 10 feet long and I'm just forcing the PEX through one end and out the other and it's straightening it out. Um, as I said before, you don't wanna leave this stuff in the sun for very long because the, uh, the UV light is damaging to it but it's okay to have it out here for a little bit and it helps warm it up a little bit and make it easier to bend into shape as well. I'm gonna go ahead and force through 10 feet of it, let it sit there for a second in the sun, force another 10 feet through. I'll do that four times and that'll be 40 feet and then I'll cut it off there. I've got about 
20 feet of the roll unraveled at this point. That's what it looks like. As you can see, it's still a little bit, you got a little bit of a wave in it. It's not gonna be perfectly straight, but this method works pretty well. All right, we've got 40 feet measured off, so we're just gonna use our uh, PVC cutters here and get a nice square cut. You kind of wrap it, your hand around as you cut through, it'll, it'll cut it a lot more square. insulation and slide it down over the pipe it's almost got like a powder coating inside so it actually glides on pretty easily I'm gonna go and do that for the full uh, 40 feet and then I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get these pipes pulled up into the attic towards the other hand until it's bunched up and then you can scoot it down the other way. much easier to do this out here where I have a bunch of room rather than trying to get this insulation put on on the pipe once I get it up in the attic so that's why I'm doing this. I've got a couple more feet to go maybe five feet to go um, but I think you're gonna get the idea so I'm just gonna wrap this up and get the insulation cut up and then I'm gonna pull this pipe up into the attic and I'll show you that. Here's my view up from in the attic here. Just finishing pulling the rest of this 40 foot long PEX pipe up. You can see how tight it is up here. I'm about to show you here. So this is the platform that I have to crawl on and there is the top of the roof. I can barely, barely fit through here army, <coughs> army crawling. So right now I'm just pushing this pipe back and then I'll make one trip down and grab the end of the pipe and drag it all the way to the end of the house where I'll drill a hole and pull it through in the garage. This is an old 1957 house. So the way they did things back then, it's just a lot different. right up against my air handler here. And my next project needs to be insulation because whoever did this did not do a good job. All right, I am in the laundry room, which is off the garage. It's all the way on the other end of my house. Right up here in the corner, this is where my hot and cold PEX, uh, three quarter inch PEX is gonna be um, coming out right there. I'm gonna drill two holes and then hot water heater is down here. So I'm going to take this one and three eighths inch bit and 
drill two holes up there. The reason I'm doing one and three eighths is because I have a little grommet that will go inside the hole and then the PEX will go through that grommet. So I'll show you that part next. These are called insulator and suspension clamps. They're for three quarter inch pipe. Um, and so the hole that I drilled uh, was one and three eighths to fit this and then the PEX pipe will go through there. And that'll just keep the uh, PEX pipe from rubbing up against the raw wood. It just gives it a nice surface to expand and contract in. So there's my hole there. And that insulator will go just like that. And then I'll probably put another one of these on the other side once I'm in the attic. And the PEX will go right through there. Here's a scrap piece of PEX. I just want to show you how this is going to go. So it'll slide right in there like that. It gives it a nice smooth surface to slide in and out of. I'm on my way through the attic here. I won't be able to record this whole thing just because it's a tight spot and my hands won't be free, but I'm heading all the way to the, that back wall where I drilled the hole. And then I'm going to uh, straighten this insulated PEX out and get it pushed through that hole back there. And then also install some uh, clamps along the way um, to hold the pipe securely in place. About halfway down here, it's tight. Got my drill, clamps, I'll be installing along the way to strap the pipe down. All right, I've got both my hot and cold lines running through there. I drilled two holes and put those um, clamps to keep the piping off the rough edges of the wood. And then both pipes are running down here and I'm using these um, plastic wire clips or plastic uh, pipe clamps. Got one there or two there, two there. It's holding it nice and secure and I'm probably gonna go, um, I don't think I'll put one on every joist here. I'll just go every other all the way down the length of the house. So looking pretty good. This is not my wiring job up here. I don't know whoever did this did not run anything neatly. It's just a disaster up here. But um, it's been like this probably for a long, long time. So I'm just gonna leave it. But I'll make sure my plumbing job looks good. Put on a couple more clamps. Looking good. Tell you what, man, I am wiped out. I'm glad I did this on a day we had a cold front come in or else I would be sweating to death up here. But I just finished running both the hot and cold lines. I don't know if you can see that. Everything's clamped down, secure, looks great. I'm done for the day, I'm taking a break. Here's the three quarter inch PEX coming through the two holes that I drilled here. Um, so that's where I pushed it through from the attic. And I've just got a bunch of excess here sticking out. Um, I, I went ahead and labeled uh, this one hot and I labeled the other end hot so I know which one, because both of these are white. Uh, the three quarter inch that they sell at Home Depot is all white. So went ahead and just labeled the hot line. Um, stuck a piece of paper towel in there just to keep any debris out. And then on this end, we're going to put these clamps again. So they just slide over the end like that. And it's a tight fit. I'm having a hard time doing the one hand and holding the camera, but you get the idea. And you just put two screws in right there, secure it. And um, these little clamps, they, they actually open and close like that. So they'll, they'll expand and contract um, with the pipe, which the pipe, the PEX pipe does expand and contract based on the temperature. Got those clamps securely fastened. Everything looks good there. I'm gonna cut both these pipes off and install uh, T fittings on each of them. And one line's gonna come this way and down this wall to the uh, washer, which is on the bottom. And then the other line is going to go this way I'm gonna have to drill two more holes 
uh, through the two by six that runs this way. And two, those two lines are gonna go out this way into the garage and add service to the kitchen and as well as um, the hot water heater, uh, which is currently uh, down here. And I'll be moving that into the garage. This is the laundry room where I just was. And this is where those two holes will be drilled. A bunch of Christmas stuff I gotta get out of here. Those holes will be drilled right there. And so those lines will continue on this way. And those are gonna service the kitchen. And then the other two lines will go that way to the hot water heater and the uh, water main that comes into the house. I'd be really careful drilling these. These are uh, one and three eighths inch holes going into the garage and I just gotta be careful because there's a lot of electrical wires here. My drill bit's not long enough so I need to get uh, an extension for it. Using this extension here, I got this on Amazon. I think it's like seven bucks. And you can take your paddle uh, wood bit and put it in the end and just tighten these two Allen head, uh, these two Allen screws down and it extends your drill bit by uh, 12 inches. Super handy to have when you're doing projects like this. All right, just gotta drill one more of those. There's those two holes from the other side in the garage. So I wanted to give you a different vantage point uh, from in the house so you can see how these lines run, but there's the attic entrance. So both the hot and cold lines are running all the way through the attic across the length of the house. And that's where I drilled those two holes to go into the laundry room. And we go this way. We've got one bathroom here, and then we've got the master bathroom in there. So off those two hot and colds, we're gonna have to split off and go that way and that way to both the bathrooms. kitchen's here. We need a hot and cold there. And then the laundry room will be simple because that's where our lines run to anyway, which is on the other side of that wall. This is my kitchen and I have no way of easily getting um, a line from the attic down this wall. Number one, because there's a window there and I don't want to rip all this um, tile off the walls. And this is also a block wall. So, um, I have to get the plumbing down to this cabinet here. So my plan is, this is the door to the garage. My plan is to come in with the pecs from this wall here, go behind the cabinets and into here where the plumbing is for the sink and the dishwasher. So I'll show you on the other side of this door in the garage, how I plan to do that. Here's the other side of the door. I'm in the garage right now. So that's where we, um, drilled those two holes and have the pecs coming through. So I'll be running two insulated lines all the way across this wall. It won't be the prettiest thing in the world, but it's going to be the best way to do this. And then I'll come down this wall and I'll drill two holes there and that will go into the, those cabinets in the kitchen that I just showed you. We've also got a few outdoor hose bibs that we're gonna have to replace. Uh, we've got one here on the other side of this brick wall is the kitchen um, in there. So. We'll probably tee off from in the kitchen and just come out through that brick wall rather than uh, coming up through the ground externally. With PEX, you can buy all different types of fittings. They sell uh, plastic fittings as well as brass fittings. I'm going with all brass. Um, you definitely end up paying a lot more going that route, but I just don't want to have weak points, uh, especially you know in places up in the attic and hard to get to places. I don't want any weak points in this installation, so I'm going with all these uh, PEX A brass fittings. These are all made by Apollo. I get these at Home Depot, and these are the three quarters inch, three quarter inch elbows. So this is what they look like. And make sure if you're using um, PEX A uh, pipe that you have PEX A fittings. You can tell that it's PEX A just by looking at this 
portion here. If you see a pex B fitting, it's going to look a lot different than this. To install PEX A piping, you need what's called an expansion tool. Now, there's two different types out there. You can go with the uh, battery operated expansion tools. Uh, Milwaukee makes one and DeWalt makes one. Uh, they're going to run to you around between four and five hundred dollars. It's going to make your job a lot easier. So if this is a really, really big job you're doing or something that you're going to be doing on a regular basis. I would highly recommend going with the, um, the electric one. Now, this is the manual tool. I think I picked this up at Home Depot, but you can get these on Amazon. Um, I'll put a link in the description to um, to one of these. So the way it works is before you start, you want it, it comes with this tube of grease. You want to put just a little bit of grease on that cone there. Uh, mine's already pretty greased up, but just a little bit um, and kind of wipe it around. This kit that I bought came with three heads. It's got the inch head three quarters and a half inch. So once you've got your cone greased there, you take, we're going with three quarters for this demonstration. You take the three quarters head, you have to pull this all the way out and you just screw it on. You can kind of see how that works when you push the handle down, it expands. Now we'll take our piece of PEX. This is three quarters inch PEX A. You want to make sure you're using PEX A. Um, these expansion tools are not for use with PEX B. You want to get a nice square cut on the end of your pipe. Just like so. And you've got your expansion rings. These slide right over top. And there's a stopper on the top of that ring, so it'll only go on one way and then it'll stop when it's all the way on take your expansion tool you open it all the way up and it goes right in there just like so and as you expand it you want to spin the pipe or the tool it's recommended that you spin it around as you expand the pipe out there's directions in here with the tool and it'll tell you like so if you have half inch tubing you're gonna need three to four expansions if you have three quarters inch tubing you're gonna need seven to nine expansions and one inch tubing is 12 to 14 expansions so your goal is to expand it until the end of the tube is flush with the uh, this cone piece here so the first two to three pumps of this tool you'll notice aren't that hard but once you get up into five six seven it's it really takes some elbow grease pipe in one turn it I kind of have the other this piece here sitting on my knee just to get a little more leverage two three four five six seven you can see we're flush there let's expand it out we'll take our fitting it goes right in we've got some time it's still going in fine getting a little resistance there so you probably have 25 seconds or so to get your fitting on and you just want to push the fitting till uh, these little tabs here are flush with the pipe we'll just let that sit and PEX A has memory, so it's just gonna shrink right back down to its original size. And you can see there's kind of like a barbed lip here, and it's gonna shrink right around that. Just trying to pull it off here. It is snug, so that joint's finished. If you make a mistake and you need to remove a fitting, I'm gonna show you the best way to do that. So um, take a heat gun, and you wanna heat up this expansion ring first. Take a razor, just slice it off. By heating it, it softens it up a lot. You can just easily slice right through it. Just don't slice all the way through the pipe yet. Just pop 
pops off just like that. So now we'll just heat up our pipe a little bit. And you don't wanna cut all the way through the pipe to where and potentially damage these brass barbs here. So you just slowly cut. There we go. So once you've done that, you want to take pipe cutters and cut off any portion of the pipe that's expanded. I would go back pretty far, maybe three inches back. And now you've got your pipe ready for a new expansion ring and fitting. Now, obviously, if you're in a really tight spot up in the attic or something, you might might not be something you want to do up in the attic with the heat gun and the razor um, but you can always just cut your fitting off with your um, pipe cutters and then put your new fitting on whatever you're whatever you're changing out and then bring this fitting out into an open area like this and uh, use your heat gun and your razor to, to get the old pieces of pipe cut off because you don't want to throw these away this this fitting alone is about nine dollars so all right so we need to cut both of these and install tees you want a nice square cut. I want to line it up with that hole that I drilled there. So we need to cut it there. All right, so put the sleeve over just like that. I think I want to install this back tee first actually so that I'm not in the way of myself there. That an inch needs to come off of that one. All right, put the sleeve on. Get our expander tool. So we're going seven times on this. One. Hold that there until it shrinks around it. All right, put our second sleeve on. how we're looking here um the reason i didn't keep this flush against this is just because i don't want these pipes directly up against all these electrical wires um we'll just keep them off a little bit and then i'll run them down below the electrical wires and use straps to strap them to this block wall and then run down to the washing machine i don't want any of this pipe exposed to uv light and this is a laundry room with a pretty good sized window in it, so there's plenty of UV light in here. Um, so I should have put on uh, the insulate a portion of the insulation before I put the fitting on. Um, but if you ever get to a point where you need to put some on after the fact, um, I just cut a piece and sliced it down the middle, and then just use two zip ties to wrap it around the pipe and hold it in place. So I'll do the same over here. Measure off a 15 inch piece of PEX here. I went ahead and bought um, a couple 20 foot straight sections uh, rather than the roll. Um, just because for what I'm about to do, it's nice to have a really, really straight piece. And I needed extra anyway.
see how straight that is. No curl on the ends. So let me compare it to the one that came off the roll. So this is a piece that came off the roll. So you can see how much straighter it is if you just buy sections of straight pipe. Pushing that through the hole. So we're going to be using our expander tool on there. And then we'll go into there for that one. Then we'll do the same for that. This time I put the insulation on beforehand. It's hard to do with the tool up high, I get no leverage when I'm up this high. Also, you've got a few seconds, like, it's not instant where you have to get it on that fitting. You've got time. I forgot to show this part. I wanted to put um, one of these clamps right inside that hole where the pipe goes through. I don't want there any, to be any uh, pipe on wood rubbing, so I'm gonna put two of these clamps uh, on each one of those, just like I did over here. So you can actually snap them on after the fact because they split open. Here's with one of the clamps installed. So I gotta put that right one on. Get an idea. Here, I'll pull back. Just like that. I'm not even gonna screw that one in. It's so tight. I've got a little bit of excess I need to cut off on these before I install these T's.
All right, so there's our T's and I've got 90 degree elbows right here. And then we'll be running, um, this is the hot line here. And then the other one's the cold. Be running those all the way down the length of the garage. And I'll run some insulation on this as well. This bottom one's the cold water line. I'm gonna take one of these shark bite tees here. This is three quarters inch to half inch, and I'll be installing that here. And then I'll be running, from the bottom of that, I'll be running half inch CPVC down that wall to um, an ice maker line because my kitchen is on the other side of this wall and the refrigerator's right there. And so I'll need um, a line for the ice maker. Get this measured. I just need to measure off a piece of insulation to go on there. got to cover this one in insulation and then I'll start strapping these to the wall. All right, this bottom one's a cold water line. And we are going down this block wall here. And at the bottom of this is where the main water main is coming in from outside of the house. So I'm going to attach this here. And then I'm also going to branch off here with a T and it's going to go this way. I'll show you that in a bit. That is going to run over to my garage fridge for the ice maker on the garage fridge, as well as I'll tee off again and go through the block wall outside to an outdoor hose bib. It's a really tight spot up here, so this is not easy. Next, I'm hooking up the hot water line, which will go down to the hot water heater right below us. And I'll insulate both of these lines. I'll just uh, slide it on from the bottom. I just gotta hold it here for a few seconds till it shrinks around that fitting so that it doesn't fall off when I let it go. All right, so I'm gonna be cutting this cold line uh, right down here. I'll be installing this shark bite fitting. It's a T, uh, three quarters inch to three quarters inch. It'll go there. And this CPVC will tie into that. And that will go it's really hard to show here, but that will go all the way down the side of my garage and down the wall to my uh, refrigerator, as well as out the wall to a uh, to a outdoor hose bib. All right, I've got that shark bite T fitting installed there, and off of that comes the three quarters inch CPVC. I've strapped those two pipes to the wall there. I strapped that CPVC to the wall with a couple 
uh, pipe clamps here. I actually use these half inch uh, hole straps. It's used for electrical conduit, but I like them better than the uh, plastic PVC ones. They're stronger and they're only one hole, so I only have to uh, so I only have to drill one hole into the concrete wall. So now I'm just gonna keep going with the CPVC here and uh, all the way down the wall to the outside refrigerator and then out the wall for the hose bib. All right, I'm on my outside wall here and this is where I'm putting uh, one of my hose bibs and I'll be drilling through this block wall here and I wanna make sure that um, I'm not drilling through an area that's filled full with concrete because I'm gonna be drilling a pretty good sized hole. So I'm just gonna first take a small concrete bit and just drill a small hole and make sure that I'm not drilling into part of the block that's full of concrete. So this is about where I wanna put it. And that's a good sign. That tells me that um, the, this block here is not full of concrete. So this is where I'm gonna drill my hole for the hose bib. And we'll go all the way through that block into the garage and then tie into the CPVC. Got our large hole saw ready to go here, right in that hole that we pre-drilled. So here we go. All right, drilled through the first side. Just gotta drill all the way through the second side now. I'm gonna finish this hole by coming in through uh, the garage side. So I poked through here, through the drywall. So I'm just gonna line up the end of this hole saw right in that hole and just finish drilling the hole all the way through. This is the hose bib that I'm gonna be installing. Um, it's made by Sharkbite and it has this three quarter inch uh, Sharkbite fitting in the back here. So um, I'm gonna take a piece of CPVC and we're just gonna insert that. Oh, by the way, this is plenty long enough to go through the, bl the block wall and come out the other side. I'm just gonna go ahead and insert that into the shark bite. Okay, it's all the way in. And then we'll just take that whole assembly and run that right through the hole. And now I'll just uh, mark these two holes here and drill those little holes into the block. Install a couple screws and we'll get that mounted. And then we'll go on inside and cut the PVC down to size and get it hooked up to our system. Picked up these concrete uh, screws with the mounts. These are number six. I'm gonna put a bead of this uh, plumber's caulk silicone before I mount this. Probably overkill, but can't hurt. I'm all about overkill. There's the excess pipe sticking out of the wall for that hose bib, so we're just going to trim off the end of that. gluing this T in place, which will tie into our CPVC that we installed earlier. The reason I went with three quarters inch CPVC for this ice maker and half inch for the other ice maker is because this one uh, leads to that hose bib outside and I thought it would be nice to have uh, a hose bib with a lot more uh, volume of water that comes out of it. So um, it wasn't a big deal to use three quarters on this. So um, it'll be three quarters all the way from the water supply all the way to the hose bib outside. I don't know if it'll make a huge difference, but it, I figured it couldn't hurt to try. All right, I went ahead and cemented all this together. So we've got the line coming down, the elbow, another three quarters inch pipe that goes into the T. The T goes out through the concrete wall to the hose bib and then also goes this way to a half inch reducer. And then I've got a piece of half inch CPVC here and then I will be attaching a shark bite onto this portion here that will have a um, quarter inch valve for the ice maker, which is right here. 
Got shark bites going on right here. All right, ice maker will screw right in there to the end. That's a quarter inch. On is that way, off is that way. We'll leave it off for now. Got the ice maker hooked up with this quarter inch PEX tubing. Just screws right down with these brass nuts on both sides. I need to add a coupling onto this pipe here because I'll be adding, I'll have, I have to extend this out another 15 or so feet across the length of the garage. So um, you can buy these brass couplings. They come with a cap on each side. I just pulled one cap off and we'll go ahead and install this on the end of this pipe. I just attached a uh, 12 foot section of uh, three quarters inch pe uh, PEX to that coupling right here and insulated it. So that goes the rest of the length down the garage. So I will do the same for the cold water line next and it'll just plug right into that shark bite. I'm running this half inch line down off this shark bite for my ice maker and I wanna keep it kind of in this channel right here. Um, it's gonna go down there that way between my uh, shelving. So I made this piece out of CPVC and 45 elbows. So that's gonna go right up in the shark bite, just like that. And then the half inch pipe will run down the wall in that corner there, all the way down to the floor where I'll drill through the wall for the ice machine on the other side of the wall. All right, so there's my cold water line uh, branching off at this shark bite and going down, running down along the length of the wall for my uh, refrigerator. Here's the half inch line for the ice maker and the refrigerator that's in the house. So this goes all the way down the wall to the floor here. And this is the copper line actually that goes to the refrigerator. Right now, this line goes all the way back to where the hot water heater is and that's where it ties in currently but we'll be adding this shark bite in right here and then i'm cutting this copper pipe here and attaching it to the shark bite right here i put a couple of copper pipe clamps to hold that cpvc in place um, I hear a lot of people say not to use um, metal clamps on CPVC because over time, as water go, moves through the pipes and the pipe shift, it could wear, it could weaken the pipe there and there could be a leak. Um, I filed the edges of these just to make sure that they weren't sharp. Um, I'm not too worried about it. Um, I just, I hate using the plastic, the little PVC plastic clamps because they're super flimsy and they always break when I screw them down. So that's why I'm using these. Now I just need to strap both of these pipes to the wall. For some areas in here, there was a lot of resistance when I was using those white clips and the pipes would kind of slowly slip out over time. So in certain spots, I'm using these conduit clamps and um, it works really well. And for the middle, I just overlapped the two clamps. So there's one, two, and then three screws. Very sturdy there, those aren't going anywhere. hot and cold supply lines and I just installed elbows on the end and so I'll tie into those with three quarters inch pecs and we'll run down this wall insulated and drill our two holes to go into the kitchen so I'm going in let's see I measured 
think I'm gonna be right in here. Two holes for this time half inch pecs. I've got my drill set up here. This is a concrete hole saw. I got this uh, this bit on Amazon. I'll put a link in the description. It's actually for an SDS hammer drill. So um, it doesn't fit very well in a normal drill chuck, but if you get it just right, uh, it will work. Uh, but it's recommended you use an, uh, a normal hammer drill, which I do not have. Although this drill here does have a hammer setting. It just won't accept SDS bits very easily anyway. So this is a long bit. It will go through uh, block walls, which is what's behind this drywall. There's just a bolt here that holds in this masonry bit here at the end and once you've got your uh, hole started you need to take this bolt out otherwise it'll uh, hit on your hole as you go through because it sticks out a little bit. So you just pull that out, the bit comes right out, okay. and just take it slow with this. This thing gets really hot. Um, so just. Pull it out every you know 10 15 seconds or so and make sure there's no concrete in the end just in the end just dump it out <laughs> whoops so luckily i went through a block that wasn't filled with concrete that's much going to be much easier dumping those bits of concrete out. All right, there's our hole. So it goes through the drywall. We've got the first piece of the um, block wall, the hollow area between the block wall, and then on the, the second hole on the other side of the block. And then I just got to drill a little further through the um, kitchen cabinets and then be ready to run our half inch pecs through there. All right, here's the cabinet in the kitchen. On the other side of that wall, there's the hole that goes um, through the cabinet and then through the block wall into the garage. So I'm just gonna drill one more of those, one for the hot, one for the cold, and then we'll be ready to uh, install the pecs. All right, I'm gonna take my half inch pecs and run it through this first hole here. kitchen here in the cabinets there's the pecs coming through and we're just gonna put it up against the other side of the cabinet there and mark where we need to drill our next hole just kind of get it level here straighten it out so we're gonna drill that hole there and then we'll drill the second hole and then we'll just keep going through these cabinets until we get over to the sink right there. I've run the pecs from the garage through the cabinets here. And as you can see, I have used these pipe holders. They're made uh, four pecs and it just fits right inside that hole that I drilled there. And then you just secure it to the inside of the cabinet with two screws. And that just keeps the PEX pipe from rubbing on that wood. Um, it's just a nice smooth surface for it to um, rest in. And you can actually move it in and out as needed. I'm going to drill a pilot hole through the cabinets and then out through the brick wall for this uh, other hose bib that we're installing. This is the one that we're tying into under the kitchen sink. So I've got this half inch masonry bit here. So I'm just going to drill a pilot hole all the way through and then we'll go outside and see uh, where we're coming out and then we'll drill it a little bit bigger so that we can get the pecs through. Here we are on the outside of that wall. There's my half inch bit coming through there. So um, now I kind of know where our hose bib's going in. And so I'm just gonna come in through here with a three quarters inch uh, masonry bit and we'll drill it out a little bit bigger to 
uh, so that we can run that PEX through. All right, I'm gonna take this three quarters inch masonry bit. It's uh, 13 inches long. I'm gonna come from the outside and just uh, en enlarge this hole a little bit so that we can fit our PEX through. Got my drill set on the hammer drill setting. So just like I did the last time with the three quarters inch CPVC, we're doing the same thing here, but with half inch pecs. And I just cut a piece that's about 15, inch, 15 inches long. I'm gonna go ahead and stick it into my hose bib. Run it through. And now we know exactly where to mark our holes to secure this hose bib to the wall. Drill those out and screw this thing in. And then we can tie into the line under the sink. Just finished installing that second hose bib. And the same way that I installed the last one, bead of silicone with the two screws on either side. It's nice and sturdy. And so the PEX is run through that brick wall to inside in the kitchen under the sink. And that's where we'll tie in at with the T. I decided to use a shark bite T to um, tie into that hose bib, which is on the other side of this wall here. So it comes this way, and then this goes to the uh, garage. So I used a shark bite because I could not get my uh, PEX expansion tool in, in this area. It's just way too tight under the sink here. So don't love having to use a shark bite. I'd rather use the expansion fittings, but in this case, uh, it was definitely the right way to go. This is one of the valves I'll be using um, under the kitchen sink. So it's a quarter turn valve. One end is a PEX A, and this is a 3 8 inch screw on here for the um, kitchen sink. We're just going to measure for the other end, which will be going into the shark bite. It fits into the shark bite. Uh, half inch shark bites are 15 sixteenths of an inch. That's how far it will go in. So I'm just going to measure that way when it when I push it in, I'll know that it's all the way in. So 15 sixteenths. Now it's ready to just slide right into that shark bite. All right, we're back under the sink. Just pushing this right into this shark bite here. There's our mark. There's our mark. And we are all the, way, all the way to the mark. So we know we're all the way in. And once with shark bites, you can spin this as much as you need. So that's it. This is our hot water. Uh, it's for the sink and then the, I'm sorry, the sink and the dishwasher. And then the cold water, which is over here, we'll be taking this black line when we're ready and screwing it right into here. For the hot water supply under the sink, I need a valve that has one outlet for the dishwasher and one outlet for the sink. Um, and I couldn't find a PEX A valve that had two. So I'm gonna go with this shark bite. Um, it's half inch and then it has two valves. So I can turn off independently the dishwasher and the sink. All right, so I installed that valve. It's kind of bouncing around here, so I'm gonna have to come up with some kind of clamp and mount it to this back wall here so that that stays still. I have a spare parts drawer with a bunch of different styles of clamps and stuff like that. So I found a clamp that I was able to screw to the back of this cabinet here, and then I just wrapped some of that insulation around it to protect it, and now this is sturdy. Um, you could even use a block of wood with a hole drilled through it. But I don't know if you can see, that's kind of how this one works. Does the job. It's 90 degree elbow here. This is half inch PEX to three quarters inch. So our three quarters inch is coming down from uh, the ceiling there and then going into our half inch here. So I've got my half inch expansion sleeve. 
and for half inch it's three to four expansions. Half inch is a lot easier to expand than three quarters inch. I'm using one of these larger insulator clamps made by Oatly. These ones are for half inch and it should fit much better in this larger hole here. I've got both elbows installed. Um, these clamps are in place. They're really tight. I don't even need to screw them in. Um, I'll be able to slide this in all the way when I'm ready to install the pipes from here to the ceiling. I've got my mark to cut this pipe here. I'm just gonna mark it right at the base of that fitting. I wanna make sure I get this right because if it's too short, it won't go all the way down the length of the fitting. Need a little extra insulation. All right, I finished this portion. Got both lines insulated, clamped down to the wall. And there's our fittings where it enters the wall and turns into um, half inch pecs, so three quarters to half inch. I even insulated this little piece that stubs out here. Probably overkill, but um, only took a couple extra minutes, so why not? Make sure none of that gets exposed to any UV light. I'm gonna be moving the washing machine from this side to here and dropping the dryer down to that side uh, once I move this hot water heater out of here. So I'm gonna be installing these new uh, washing machine valves uh, to the left. It's gonna go about right in there, actually this way. To mount this valve onto the block wall, um, I'm going to be using these screws by Kleins. This is actually, um, I think it's in the electrical department, but I use these all the time rather than um, Tapcons. I just like them more. Um, this, this kit actually came with the masonry bit, and so you drill a hole, put in this yellow sleeve, and then use these screws. Um, so that's how I'm going to be mounting the valves to the block wall there. I just put marks on the wall where I need to drill these holes. All right, there's one hole. Just gonna drill that second one on the left and then I'll be able to mount that just like that. Running uh, insulated pecs to these valves is going to be a little bit bulky because they're so flush with the wall. So what I've decided to do is go ahead and run half inch CPVC to these valves. Um, that way I won't need to use insulation. CPVC can be exposed to UV light, no problem. And I'll just, uh, I'll be able to strap it uh, much more securely to the wall. And then I'll just tie into the 
PEX up here with a PEX to CPVC adapter. I'm gonna make an adapter here to transition from three quarters inch PEX to three quarters inch CPVC, and then from that to half inch CPVC. So here's the parts. This is three quarters inch uh, CPVC, and this is a CPVC to PEX adapter. So that end will go like that. This will go onto three quarters inch PEX, and then this elbow here is three quarters inch to half inch uh, CPVC. So that'll go there. And then from here, I'll put half inch CPVC down to the washer, washing machine valves. Uh, this is CPVC cement. It's um, one step. So supposedly with the stuff, you don't even need to use primer, uh, which I prefer because primer is really messy. So we'll see how this stuff works. there for a few seconds all right that's it for that joint now we'll just cut this um, doesn't really matter where I cut it let's just say right here That's it. Got a half inch to three quarters inch CPVC to PEX adapter without having to use a shark bite, which I would prefer to use something like this just because I've never had a shark bite fail, but um, there's the you know potential for that and I just feel much more comfortable using something that's glued together. So, plus this is cheaper than a shark bite. I had kind of a thick bead of uh, PVC cement there, so I just went ahead and wiped it clean with the rag. I've got my section of half inch CPVC cut. All right, we're ready to get this installed onto the washing machine valve. I like using these copper pipe straps rather than the PVC ones just because they're a lot sturdier. Go ahead and push this pipe into the shark bite valve. All right, so I cut this piece a little too long. I'm gonna have to cut that off. And then I'm gonna have to just bend it to get up to this point. This three quarters inch tubing is a little bit hard to deal with. I might even need to just slightly heat it with a heat gun to get it to bend. You don't wanna to go too much with a heat gun because you don't wanna damage it, but you can heat it up ever so slightly to get it to bend where you need it to go. And you don't wanna bend sharp bends into it. You wanna uh, do gradual bends but I will slide on the insulation before I connect to this uh, washing machine valve here.
just gonna put a heat gun to this pipe just to get it slightly warmed up to make it easier to bend. All right, so I got that connected. This is obviously way too much pressure on that pipe. So I'm gonna have to strap this pipe to this. I'm gonna use these um, electrical conduit straps. They're really heavy duty uh, PVC plastic to strap uh, this pipe here to the concrete wall. Put this here. This pipe here was still kind of slipping past this uh, clamp that I put on, so I put another uh, pipe clamp over here just to hold the pipe um, perfectly vertical. And then down here I went with this much sturdier bracket, um, so I won't even I won't even put one of these plastic ones down here. I'll just come straight in with the PEX, and this bracket here is holding it really tight against the wall. All right, I just wrapped up installing the pecs for the hot water line there. So now I've got both my hot and cold washing machine lines hooked up. They run all the way down to the valves right there. This is where my water meter is right here. And so that water line comes in all the way down the side of my property. It currently makes a left turn here and enters the slab right about there. So what I'll be doing is drilling a hole in here. This is where the hot water heater is gonna go on the other side of this wall in the garage. And we'll be coming out of there, go down this way. And tie into that water main, probably somewhere right in here and I'll put a valve um, in the ground there with a cover so that I have a way to turn the water on and off without going to the uh, meter by the street. This is gonna be a whole project in and of itself, so I'll be making a separate video and I'll show how I do this from start to finish, uh, tying into that water main and uh, bringing it down the side of the house here and into the garage where we'll tie into the hot water heater. Okay, so I'm done with the majority of this project. Um, I still have to run plumbing to uh, I'm in the master bath right now. I still have to run plumbing to all the fixtures in here. There's a shower there. And uh, I'm gonna do it from the other side um, of the wall so that I don't have to rip any of the tile up and I'll just be able to cut out the drywall and access it from there. What you saw me do in the kitchen, it's it's going to be the same concept, you know, running the pecs down the walls to the fixtures and then um, capping off the old copper pipes. This is the second bathroom. So I will need to um, go on the other side of this wall it's just uh, one of the bedrooms and I'll be cutting out drywall there to access all the piping uh, for this sink and the toilets here and then the shower over here. So, let's see, it's all on one wall. And uh, I have this endoscope here. Pick this up on Amazon, it actually hooks right to my cell phone and I can put the end of this camera into the wall and take a look at the pipes that are currently there and just kind of see um, what's going on back there before I start cutting out huge sections of the drywall. So um, I only have to drill like I think it's a seven or eight millimeter hole and I can put this camera in. It's got a light on it 
Um, I'll put a link in the description to one of these, but it's it's a great little tool, and it's going to really um, cut down on how much drywall, how much damage I have to do to the drywall uh, in order to replumb behind these walls. So I'm going to do another video where I show that whole process. I'm not ready to do that quite yet, so I'm going to go ahead and get this video uploaded, and that'll show pretty much the majority of this job. And then when I'm ready to um, start cutting into drywall and getting these bathrooms uh, replumbed re and connected into the main trunk lines. I'll create another video for that. If you could just do me a huge favor and give a thumbs up on this video and also subscribe to the channel, I'd really appreciate it. Um, and feel free to leave a comment below if you'd like as well. I'm usually pretty good about responding to all the comments, so if you have any questions, feel free to reach out.